Hi, this is David Duez. I'm the teacher of AP Psychology, and I thought I might be the guy for you if you have the question of why you should take AP Psychology at AHS. So I thought I'd put together a quick video here for you to help you answer the question and see if, if this is for you. If you're at all interested in the course, you can always email me or stop by and see me in room 12, uh, 1207 in Red 2, just in case there may be some questions I can ask or answer from you, sorry, that uh, I don't answer here. Um, if you haven't signed up for the course yet through Bridges, you can always change uh, your courses. Whenever you get your course uh, form back, you can scratch it out and put some things in. There's a couple of things to know about that I'll talk about at the end of the video that if you're going to take AP Psych, you need to make sure you put in the right uh, combination of courses. It's a little tricky, but I can help you do that. First, I've been teaching at AHS since 2006. It's, uh, that's the year the school opened. and It's been a great experience for me, but one of the better experiences for me at AHS has been taking AP Psychology, which was a course that was barely being utilized, I think. We had about 40 kids the first year, and to see this grow into what it is today, where I've got 150 kids taking it this year, um, that's pretty, it's pretty awesome and something I'm pretty proud about. Uh, students tend to enjoy the class, but they enjoy it for a lot of reasons. One reason is there's a great chance for them to succeed, and seven of the top ten last year were able to earn college credit by taking the AP psychology test, and uh, that definitely was a big feather in their cap, and plenty of other kids have as well. Um, why take an AP class in general anyway? When the state of Texas now, they have passed a new bill into law that will make um, any three, four, or five at a public university in Texas, it would give you college credit. So a school like A&M, it's an $871 basically cost savings, or could be. Um, university of Texas is over $1,000. So generally speaking, taking a $100 test can give you $1,000 in return. And this is just some more information about that. But uh, this is something that... Um, is a feather in your cap and a great benefit to taking AP classes is a chance to get college credit. But the other thing is a factor in just getting into certain schools, especially some of those hard to get into schools that are private schools, private universities. They look at your grades in college prep courses. And really any grade in a college prep course is a good thing, but AP classes are measured across the entire country on a single day. In this coming year, it's May 2nd, Monday, May 2nd at uh, at noon, we'll take the AP Psychology test, and plenty of students are going to get a 3, 4, or 5 and get college credit. But those scores um, are probably reflective of how they did in the course in general. Those grades can really impact whether or not a college or university decides to accept you. Um, why should you take it, though, and what's it about? The purpose is to introduce you to the systematic and scientific study of behavior and mental processes of human beings and other animals. It's basically a Psych 101 course or an Introduction to Psychology course in college. And that is a course you would not necessarily have to take when you go to college if you get college credit. And uh, you could take something more interesting along the lines of one of the subfields or uh, other areas of psychology that we'll study along through the, throughout the year. But first, why take it at AHS? Why take AP Psych? Well, you're going to learn more about yourself and other people and how to relate to them. I think we've got one of the best websites going and lots of great resources for, for you from our textbook to the programs on the computer called Psych Trek 3.1. It's a multimedia introduction to psychs. Really, really nice if you're into that sort of thing and learning in that way. But understand how your biology affecting your behavior is really key for somebody your age. An adolescent person or a teenager is going through a lot of biological changes, but your brain is finishing its last um, pruning of connections, especially the frontal lobe. And that's really where the error in decision making sometimes happens or why you feel more emotional about certain things and um, aren't really sure why you're so emotional or uh, having trouble controlling your behavior at some point and sometimes. Everybody's differently, but when you're about 25, that's when your brain finishes development and uh, you'll probably sense the difference when you're in your 20s and 30s that your brain has developed more. But you want to do well in college, memorization's a big key. And we learn about that in the memory unit, which I'll talk about here in a second. 
Uh, and you can earn college credit, which I've been mentioning. It's very important. But we do some fun things in AP Psych. Uh, we did the Lego project this fall where students were able to kind of document how they were doing that and learn more about like research methods through that. So we just had a fun way of doing that through using Legos and then trying to recreate them just like you'd recreate someone else's research project. Here's a reason to take AP Psych. If you had problems in AP World History, maybe you didn't score exactly where you wanted to score. There are reasons for that. That test is not only hard and difficult at a level that's way above AP Psych because we don't have FRQs like they do. Our, um, our essays are basically define, use the term in a scenario, and give them an example of the term. That's really what it boils down to. There's no thesis statement. There is no DBQ or CCOT or comparative essay. There's two of these types of questions, and that is it. 100 multiple choice questions, five choices on that part, and then the two FRQ questions. So that's the first part of it is, I think it's much more manageable. You have to be able to remember this information. That's very important and, and get it ready for the test. But in AP World History too, if you look at the bottom information there, 6.6% .6 of people got a five last year in 2015. And only 52% had a passing score. And if you compare that to AP Psychology, 20% had a passing score of 5, and 66% overall passed. Why? Well, the AP College Board deems that most sophomores and freshmen who take AP World History cannot possibly be college-ready enough. Uh, those people who take AP Psychology, the students who do, are juniors and seniors. So they say, hey, they're more college-ready, so wouldn't more of them get college credit. I think it's kind of silly in a way because it's not really fair for sophomores and freshmen to take AP World History and AP uh, Human uh, Geography for that matter. It's very similar. Um, AP World is pretty similar to AP Human Geography. So as you move up, the AP classes get easier to score a passing score. It's kind of strange, but think about that when you're making your choice. Don't let other AP classes kind of affect this one. Here, just a quick look at the different things we'll study, like history methods introduces the course to you. Research methods sort, sort of sets the foundation of how we'll look at research studies and understand them. Biological basis of behavior looks at the brain and um, your nervous system and every part of your biology and how that affects the behaviors and decisions that you make. Sensation and perception is a really great area from the blue dress or the gold dress from last spring, uh, that big debate that was on the internet, to really interesting phenomenon that we see every day, but we don't really see them correctly. Crash Course is also a big part of this um, AP Psychology year-long class because it is really good for psychology. In fact, I highly recommend it. Um, the types of things that they discuss are just basically AP Psych things. It's really well put together, and some of the crash courses really aren't um, in comparison. Um, I also have a great number of psych videos, lecture videos, on YouTube for students to look at, especially if you were absent or don't understand a topic, you can go out there and watch it. Um, states of consciousness is something we also study. It's only 2 to 4% of the AP test, but it is a fairly interesting thing. Uh, why do we sleep? And how do, what do dreams mean? And um, all other types of uh, consciousness, like uh, is this thing called hypnosis a thing or not? And it is. Learning um, is a great chapter. It looks at um, the different types of conditioning, classical and operant conditioning, and social learning. Cognition is where you'll find memory, language, and thought. I love this topic because it's really very, very interesting to me. Motivation and emotion is a fascinating topic too because you're dealing with people and how they react to situations, um, why they react that way from the biological perspective all the way through like, um, we'll look at uh, human sexuality in this chapter as we do in a lot of others, like developmental psych. Obviously, that's going to be a part of that chapter. So we're looking at prenatal development of the fetus all the way through birth, uh, that of a young child through adolescence and adulthood, and all the way through the phases of life. Um, personality is another very interesting topic to students. You know, why are you you? 
That's really what this is about and what makes you you. Does that change over time? Uh, do you get older and can you, your personality adapt and change? Testing and individual differences, we'll look at IQ and IQ scores. And is that even a valid thing to do? And I'll give you a little hint. It is because they do actually correspond with certain things like uh, people who score high on IQ tests are more likely than those who score low to end up in high status and high paying jobs. That kind of stinks, but that's just the way the, that's just the way the data read. Um, abnormal psych and uh, the treatment of psychological disorders is something we'll study at the very end of the year, the last unit that we study. But this is what everybody wants to talk about the most. All the rest is giving you a foundation to be able to do that properly. And uh, social psychology is the last one of the last things we study. It's right before this uh, abnormal psych. And it's really fascinating. We look at groups and group behavior and individuals and how you respond to situations like crowds. Do you conform or have obedience? Those types of things. Is some of this inborn in you or part of human nature? Um, We'll also discuss careers in psychology, mostly towards the end. A fascinating career in psychology that's emerging is sports psychology. The Seahawks have a performance specialist who is a psychologist, uh, Michael Gervais, and he works with everybody on the team, including the quarterback, to be able to visualize things, to be able to center themselves, uh, to think through and see the play. And your brain doesn't know the difference, really, between whether you're visualizing very, very strongly and vividly or whether you're actually doing it. And this is extra reps and extra practice. When he gets into the game, the game slows down for him. It also looks at overcoming things like adversity, throwing four interceptions in a championship game, and then being able to throw the last touchdown to beat the Packers and go to the Super Bowl. Those types of things is what, are what the Seahawks believe a psychologist on their team has been able to enable them to do. Um, so, last thing here. To sign up for AP Psychology, you need to have AP Psychology, of course, but the other course for the other semester would be Psychology Pre-AP. These two together give you the huge advantage of having AP Psychology the whole year long. And I know this is a little bit confusing, but the state of Texas only gives you credit for AP Psychology as a one semester course. So that's the area, that's the difference there. Um, so don't get too confused about that. So if you have to do this on a course correction form, just make sure you have those two things on there. This video will be on my website and I will be in my classroom like I usually am till about 315 every day. If you have questions, stop by and see me at 12 and 1207 or send me an email. I'll be glad to reply to you. And hopefully this video has helped you make the decision about whether or not AP Psychology is the right thing for you. Hopefully I'll see you next year in AP Psychology. Thanks.